Hello Bravers, how are you guys doing? So, today I wanted to chat to you about the ego because I was preparing for last night's Brave To Be Me webinar which was all about reclaiming our power and while I was preparing I went through some old notes from a workshop that I ran a few years ago called Connect With Your Inner Wisdom and there was a section in there on ego and I was reading through it thinking hmm, it was pretty good. So I thought that's what I will share with you today. So first things first, what is the ego? So the ego is that voice in our head, that inner critic, um, inner parent. It's all pretty much the same thing, but for ease, let's just call it ego. And our ego is there to try and protect us. Uh, we developed it when we were younger. So, you know, as things were happening in childhood uh, and throughout our life, that uh, didn't feel very good. Uh, we, yeah, we created rules for ourselves on how to do things so that we could avoid feeling bad like that again. But the problem with that is that we did all of that when we were still little, and so we hadn't fully developed our brains yet, our ability to reason and, and you know, see logic. And so some of the rules that we developed for ourselves, um, they don't really apply anymore. You know, they might have made some sense back then, but they certainly don't make sense now. And so often we don't know that this is happening. They say 95% of your uh, brain is, 95% of what you do is done from the subconscious or the unconscious. So basically what that means is it's done without your awareness. So you are living most of your life, 95% of your life on autopilot, simply being, you know, pushed and prodded and guided by your automatic responses. And until you begin to become consciously aware of how you are doing things, it's very difficult to start changing those things. So part of that is becoming aware of the voice of your ego. So understanding when you are making decisions that are based in fear rather than in love. That's a big sign of the ego. Uh, and when you're holding yourself back, when you're sabotaging yourself, when you are yeah, believing these unhelpful stories that you developed in childhood that are not really serving you now. So there are three specific things that the ego likes to make us believe. We always speak about the ego as if it's like its own person. Um, yeah, we maybe shouldn't give that much power, but anyway. There's three things that the ego likes. So when it comes to worthiness, sorry, I'm going off on tangents here. When it comes to worthiness, our egos like to make us believe these three things that are going to help us be worthy somehow. The first thing is, I am what I have. So who has experienced that? I am what I have, like buying into that story. So in other words, you think, you know, for some people, they begin to focus on material goods. I've got to have the latest car. I've got to have the latest smartwatch. I need to upgrade my phone all the time. I need all these things and stuff. And if I don't have all these things and stuff, then I am not worthy somehow. It can also relate to money. If you've got any kind of, um, you know, money mindset issues, uh, then that can also be the ego at place, that scarcity mindset going, um, I have to have a lot, I have to have a lot. If I don't have a lot, I'm not worthy. And so what can happen is when you have one instance of, you know, not getting what you want, then you begin to doubt yourself and you begin to feel unworthy and you begin to feel not good enough. And that doesn't feel very good. And it becomes this like, perpetuating the self self perpetuating cycle where you think I have to have all the things in order to be good enough but I don't have all the things so therefore I'm not good enough but then I need to get all the things so that I can be good enough again but now I don't have all the things so now I'm not good enough does that make sense it kind of goes on this loop like around and around and around and it just ends up with you not feeling very good about yourself so I am asking you to challenge that story of I am what I have you are not what you have. You are beautiful, just as you are. Okay, so having all the latest goody ads is not what makes you worthy. Let's start challenging that belief. Because the other thing with that is that all the validation is external. It's outside of you, which means it's not within your control. So sure, it's exciting to have some of the, you know, the good things. Um, but it's your worthiness is not equated with everything that you have that's material. Okay. The next thing the ego tries to make you believe is I am what 
I accomplish or what I do. So I am what I do. I am what I accomplish. Sadly, wanting to be better than the Joneses is horribly common. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> Absolutely. We all look at what other people have and then we feel like we're not worthy by comparison. And that can apply to anything. I mean, it can be like actual, you know, gadgets and material things, but it can also be stuff like looking at, you know, looking around you and maybe all your friends are married and you're still single and you, then you feel not good by comparison. So it's it's that comparisonitis thing that we do. You know, me as a coach, I can look at other coaches who are like wildly successful making crazy amounts of money and then I can look at my more modest business and I can go, oh, well, clearly I'm not good compared to them, you know? So that whole I am what I have thing is just really not good for our self-esteem. And it's not true. So the second one is I am what I accomplish or I am what I do. And... You know, a lot of people place a lot of value on, again, that external validation. So things like, um, you know, I have to constantly be getting promoted at work. Otherwise, I don't have any value. There's a difference between striving for promotion because you want to grow and develop versus I have to do it or I'm not going to be good enough. You know, people are going to think poorly of me or I'm going to think poorly of me because I should be the best. Like, who says you have to be the best? Can't you just be happy? <laughs> Maybe that's okay. So striving for growth doesn't mean striving to be the best. It means looking for expansion, looking to um, grow your your consciousness, your, your understanding, your skills, all of that. Like, that can come from a very uh, internal place of inspiration versus I need to do all these things so that I look like I know what I am doing in this life. Looks, family, friends, possessions. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, so I am what I accomplish or I am what I do. And some people as well, they get very caught up in doing a lot of qualifications or a lot of courses. And they're like, if I don't get a certificate at the end of this, then it's not going to mean anything to me. But again, like surely learning in that, I mean, obviously it depends. You know, if you're going to be a doctor, you need to be officially a doctor. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to practice. But there's certain things where I think like we place too much value on the external, like the certificate, the ticking the boxes, you know. Um, I know someone who really judged people who didn't have degrees, like just basic undergraduate degrees. And that was seen as like, a no, but you have to get a degree. And it was like, but it depends what you do in life, because a simple degree by itself, there's not much you can do with that. Like I have a degree in... In, I've got a Bachelor of Arts specializing in psychological counseling. I can't do anything with that. Literally nothing. In order to do something with it, I have to study more. It's not enough to just do that. But that brings that whole not enough thing in, you know. So it's not about what you accomplish and what you do. It's about what are you striving for? What are you, what are you, how are you wanting to grow? How are you wanting to help people? Like, do it for yourself, not for other people. Which brings me on to the third message of the ego, which is, I am what other people think of me. And this one is crippling. We place so much weight on other people's opinions and we ignore how we feel. And it's so sad because when other people make snide comments or, you know, those, those comments people sometimes make that have these like undertones, there's an, the words are okay, but the energy underneath the words or the tone of voice or the look on their face or something like that, you can see the judgment, you can feel the judgment and it's so uncomfortable and it's so unnecessary and it really doesn't matter <laughs> because truthfully, if you are triggering judgment in somebody, there's something about themselves that they are seeing in you and it's making them uncomfortable. So even when somebody is judging you, it's not about you, it's about them. It's a reflection of how they feel about themselves. So, and vice versa, if you find yourself judging somebody, uh, again, they're triggering something for you. There's, you're seeing something in them that you haven't quite healed yourself. And that's why you're feeling that judgment. Because by judging them, you don't have to judge yourself. But you do judge yourself. And so, oh, no, I'm going to judge this person instead. Does that make sense? So, but the ego like really loves that. The ego loves separation and, and judgment and criticism. So I am what other people think of me. And that absolutely is not true. Okay. Not true. 
So if you can begin challenging those three stories of the ego, you can begin to see a really noticeable difference or feel a noticeable difference um, Yeah, in yourself, how you feel. Uh, and you'll be able to hear a noticeable difference in that internal chatter that's going on in your mind, that, you know, that inner voice. So I am what I have. Not true. I am what I do or accomplish. Not true. And I am what other people think of me. Not true. Okay. Challenge your thoughts. Begin to feel better. It's interesting because when you look at the word ego, apparently you can think of it as an acronym, which stands for edge guard out. Um, I heard, I think it was Dr. Wayne Dyer who I heard say that. And he said it's edge guard out. So in other words, to live a God, he speaks about to live a God realized life. And what he means by that is to connect with your own beliefs, whatever they are, that's okay. But to connect with your own inner power, your inner wisdom, your consciousness, um, to expand it, to have, you know, kind morals and values and principles and to live by those. And that's what he means when he says a God realized life. Um, and to feel really good and to share that with other people, to be kind and compassionate and, and all of those amazing things. And when you, when you don't live with love, when you lead with fear, you're edging God out and that's ego, E-G-O. So cool. I really like that. So I thought I'd share that too. Bronwyn, the flip side also holds being judged because you have a degree, assumed you got it just to be better than others. That's true. And that's exactly it because, um, if you are doing it because you have a genuine interest and you genuinely want to want to learn that and grow or go into that specific career, then yeah, you need to get the degree, you know, um, or the master's or the PhD or whatever it is that you're going for. So absolutely. But I mean, I guess, yeah, people could judge you for that, especially people who don't hold a lot of stock in, um, in higher education. They might be looking at you and go, oh, she's just an academic. What does she know? <laughs> you know, which is so not true. So the only opinion that actually matters is your own. And that's really all it comes down to. As long as you are leading with love, if you are treating people well, if you are treating yourself well, if you're living with integrity, it's okay. It's all good. Yours is the only opinion that matters. And your real opinion, not your ego's opinion. So remember, you are not your thoughts. You are you. Beautiful. Light. Positive. Energy. Source. Love, peace, wisdom, all of that stuff, okay? You are not these critical thoughts that you sometimes think. So challenge them, challenge them, challenge them. I think it's a pretty straightforward message today, which is, I am what I have, not true. I am what I do, not true. I am what other people think of me, not true. Challenge these thoughts. So remember, it starts with awareness. So it's having awareness that you're having these thoughts in the first place or that you're buying into these stories. It's practicing the pause so that you can like disrupt the momentum of that of that thought. Uh, so practice the pause, take a deep belly breath, walk out of the room, go do something else, put on a song and have a dance, like do anything to just break the tension of the moment. And then it's choosing a new thought or choosing a new response. Or choosing to do something that's going to feel really good to you. So this is how we take care of ourselves. And this is how we begin to create change. Is by disrupting those old patterns. Which by the way was the first webinar in the Brave to Be Me series. We looked at this in depth. Like really in depth. Um, and then last night we built on it by uh, doing the Reclaim Your Power webinar. So yeah, we, we just added a whole layer of depth to it. Which was really cool. Next week, we've got um, Authentically Take Aligned Action, which is going to be really cool. We, uh, I'm going to be bringing in some TA theory to look at how to create actions for yourself that will lead to the success that you desire, but not just to be strategic about it, although that is part of it, also to be intuitive and inspired and in alignment with your authentic self. And how to move forward from that place rather than this place of the ego of I need to get ahead because I've got to prove to everybody what I can do because I've got to have all the things so that I can feel like I'm good enough. No. <laughs> I want to do these things because I want to do these things because I feel good about it and I want to help people or whatever it is, you know. But it's it's about being inspired, not, not um, compelled. 
Makes sense. Simple messages are often most important. Absolutely. And then I think we, we overcomplicate them as well. Like even now, I hear myself just going on and on and on when actually my very simple message is done. <laughs> um, but sometimes I get excited and I like to use all the words. <laughs> so yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, that is it. Um, if you want to know more about the Brave to Be Me webinars, you can go to the pinned post at the top of our group. Uh, there's information there. You can still join us. And if you've got any questions around mindset or around any of the other topics of the week, then feel free to, yeah, to pop them in the group. You guys can post in the group, by the way, just to remind you. Um, I've set, I've made the settings so that I have to approve the post just because um, I don't want people doing spam and um, like dodgy, dodgy posts. I had one person come in and automatically start trying to spam the group with like just weird stuff. Um, so I removed that person from the group. But yeah, so I have to approve the post. So if you're worried that the post is not relevant or appropriate, I just simply won't approve it. But to be honest, like there's such a tiny small amount that wouldn't be appropriate. So you can just go ahead and post in the group and I'm sure 99.9% .9 of what you guys want to share is awesome and I would love to see it. So you can post funny videos or memes that you think are appropriate. You can ask questions if you're struggling with something and you want some support, ask. Like put a post out and say, guys, I am struggling today. Please can you send me some love? And I'm telling you, people in the group will send you some love. Like whatever you need, this group is here for that. Okay, as long as it's done with integrity, like this is open. So please feel free to post and any resources or anything that inspire you, like feel free to, yeah, to do a post on it. I would love to see that. Cool. All right. Thanks Bronwyn and Pam for joining me and anyone else who dipped in and out or who's still there, but maybe I can't see you. If you're watching this on the replay, thank you for doing that. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Tuesday and I will see you throughout the week in the comments. Um, yeah, that's about it. Cool. All right. Bye guys.